Hey, Little Miracles. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Reagan Parent, and I've been operating this channel for about two years, and I've produced over 600 videos. Not all of them have been climate-related. Much is chronicling my own life because I am a real person still, despite all the circumstances. And I know that I'm privileged. I am extremely fortunate to be in the position that I am. So this isn't a crybaby channel or somebody trying to panter to your inner insecurities. I am just reporting on what I feel is necessary. At this time, in fact, years ago, if we were a more upright species, we all might have started a YouTube channel and documenting what we see around the world day to day, being good stewards of this planet. Though there are a few on YouTube and other platforms who insist on um, staying true, and I applaud them. One of those people is Paul Beckwith. And I should say again that I have tremendous respect for him, his uh, orientation around reporting, and how he consistently keeps <sighs> accurate with the latest scientific findings. Not trying to lose you there. That's a smart way of saying he's on top of it. You know, he went to he went to the cops. He he's he's done his part as far as I'm concerned. However, there's something that he tends to do, and it's finally being addressed in this video. I'm not trying to sound dramatic, but he finally addresses the Dumosphere, aka what my channel and a few others are dedicated to, which is painting out a picture of realism, reality, just looking at the data and evidence and drawing sound conclusions. This isn't like I'm making this up, I'm just using common sense. And he employs a tactic which I employ every day, so I can't necessarily knock him for it, but I am going to poke at him just, just for a minute. So this is Paul Beckwith finally addressing the Dumosphere. I've been waiting probably over two years for this moment. Let's watch it. I'm going to put it up here. The fact that there's papers like this coming out in peer-reviewed papers, um, and this is in reputable journal, um, you know, people are getting extremely concerned about the existential risk of climate change basically wiping out the human species. Um, there's a whole doom of sphere, if you like, of people that actually think that it's over, like there's nothing we can do. But, you know, I'm not one of those people. Um, I have what people say is hopium. <laughs> you know, some people use that term. But anyway, I, I'm kind of like, you know, I look at the evidence, I talk about it. I look at the solution ideas, I try to weigh them relative to each other. And, you know, I do what I can to get the message out there. And uh, there's a lot of things that we don't know. And I always give the argument that, you know, if you think we're doomed, what, what would, uh, what if the US, the entire US military budget went to fighting climate change for a couple of years, finding different solution ideas, et cetera. You know, what would that make a difference? You know, that's a question to think about because, you know, there's vast pots of money there. You know, if money was no object, what would we do to preserve our species? If anything, that's a big question, I guess. People in the Dumasphere say, you know, it doesn't matter what we do, it's game over. But like I said, I'm not in that category. So anyway, it's kind of a fun exercise to consider far out there ideas um, whether they're practical or not, because, um, you know, maybe one of them will hit eventually. So I came across this. Okay, I should preface, that was the video. That was him finally acknowledging in about a minute and a half uh, my entire community and several others. And I want to actually respond. I want to actually respond to this. Not facetiously, just matter of fact. Okay. First off, the idea of shooting moon dust, that was the title, that was the, the this video's uh, contents was taking moon dust, like 10 million tons of it, and shooting it towards somehow, I'm not, it's science fiction, okay? I've seen enough science fiction movies. And shooting it towards the sun to block out sunlight. 
All right, let's just skip that. Never mind that I even mentioned that um, because it's so absurd. Here's what I'm here's what I'm relying on. Okay, I'm relying on the fact that our climate envoy literally just said in the past month that the corporations that are responsible for the most greenhouse gas emissions have no clue how they're going to get to net zero or their emissions targets. John Kerry, our guy who knows more information than most of us, he has pretty much access to all their books, as far as I'm concerned, the Federal Reserve, you name it, Biden's who gave him the whole, the whole lot, I'm sure. And if he's saying that... To keep within our reach the vital goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, every nation needs to bring their highest possible ambitions to the table when we meet in Glasgow for COP26. Many of the promises made in Paris five years ago have failed. I got to sit down with the White House climate czar, John Kerry, to see how this time needs to be different. Ambition without action is fantasy. How do we go from fantasy and make sure that doesn't happen and get measured result from two weeks in Glasgow? This is the moment that the scientists told us mm -hmm. we have now about nine years within which to make the, the most important decisions that get us there. I think Greta Thunberg says this is what betrayal looks like. Whatever our so-called leaders are doing, they're doing it wrong. And it made us think about that it is a beautiful image of you signing the Paris Agreement with your granddaughter Isabel on your lap, and that's just five years ago or so. Do you think that as a globe the leaders have failed Isabel? Well, a lot of them have failed, but I think it's unfair and I understand Greta's frustration and anger. She's absolutely right to be pressing the urgency of our doing that. But there are leaders out there trying to get some things done, and we've got to speed it up. He's not saying, oh, yes, we are going to put all of our military budget, which, speaking of which, you know, is easily over a trillion dollars, probably two when you consider the Department of Defense, Pentagon, all of it combined. Okay, and two hundred thousand dollars of that, actually two of those, two missiles that were two hundred thousand dollars each were fired at a rocket over Lake Huron near where I live, in America. See, maybe of course you don't live in America. I'm addressing Mr. Beckwith, uh, but we do. Okay, and when you're living in it, not that that should make a big difference. I mean, you're, you're a well-educated, versed, traveled individual. Hell, you rode a camel. You've been to Egypt, okay, for crying out loud. You know, when I'm hearing things like this, when I'm hearing things like insects are dying at 2%, insects are going extinct at a rate of 2% a year, there's four, over 420 parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere combined on top of methane and nitrous were easily over 500 parts per million of greenhouse gas emissions that we haven't even felt the full effects of yet. When you go out in public every day, and I know you do, you go shopping, you're a normal person, I'm addressing you and everyone else here, it's business as usual. No one's even flinching, okay? And and when I go, like just most recently, I'll paint an example of going into a public place and of seeing on the television them, the weatherman, the local news station, Literally saying that the past four years, in fact, the past seven years have been the most warmest on record, but in, in terms of where I live, the past four years have all had record heat, and no one is even paying attention. No one's even looking at the screen and saying, huh, maybe we're trending in the wrong direction. This doesn't look good. You know, the early signs of it. You know, the mass hypnosis, that's what I'm, that's what I'm describing. Mass hypnosis. Yes, we know enough. I know that we've known about this issue for a long time. I know that our, and we haven't done anything tangible. I know that our main lead climate envoy, the guy who is, who is determined, I mean, who is set to be our climate negotiator for all of the United States, literally just said, nope, it's a non-starter. Okay. Not even considering the tensions in the world right now, or that we're 90 seconds to midnight, and I do mean tensions in Ukraine and Taiwan and China and the rest that, that's completely disturbing, like, international relations. Not to mention India and, and Africa's growing economy, okay? 
what you're doing, I should finally address it, is you're compartmentalizing. I'm not new here. Look, I know I'm not special in telling you this, or any people smoking hopium, really. It's self-evident to me. And what you're doing is compartmentalizing. You're taking the information or the possibility and you're saying, no, I'm going to put it in a filing cabinet in the back of my brain. Just forget about it. I do the same thing, okay, in some ways. When I go out every single day, in fact, I just went out to lunch yesterday, a whole cr crowd, restaurant full of people, completely oblivious. It's like the Twilight Zone. It's like, and I have to compartmentalize not screaming at the top of my lungs, getting up on the table and, and telling everyone that we're all going to fucking die in 10 years. Okay? I have to compartmentalize my behavior, rein it in, you know, and I went through that phase. I should mention, I'm not clueless here, okay? I read the IPCC in 2016. I've been through this whole quagmire, like, for the past six, seven years at least, all right? From watching all of your videos, I'm speaking to Mr. Beckwith and other Doom uh, climate-related channels, watching all their videos, reading the peer-reviewed literature, staying on top of it, taking notice of every cop, like really tracking this development. And I've seen no progress at all. I've seen, I've seen us going in the opposite direction. I've seen more advertisements for goods and services as business as, business as usual. Okay? So I, I don't mean to sound dramatic or knock on you too hard. I'm actually happy about this moment where Paul is finally addressing my community and many others. Um, our time was long gone. You know, we would have maybe had a chance in the 90s, definitely in the 70s, to rein in the human population because we've just exploded. We are, consu we are consuming more of Earth's resources. That's a fact. These are facts. Okay, I'm not, I'm just being realist, not a Debbie Downer, not negative, uh, science doesn't have a persona, okay, you have a persona, but, and you, you determine things as positive or negative, but this isn't, is gravity negative, is the um, process that goes on in the mitochondria in your cells is, is that to produce energy so you can live and function and see this video, is that negative or positive? No, it just is. It's just the law of the universe. Science, we can, something we're continuously discovering. So I've made my case, not that there's anything to be won here, but I just wanted to indicate to everyone that I'm still here. Um, my thousand subscribers seem to get it. Um, and if I was wired a little differently, I might perceive this issue as he does. Yes, it's pressing, it's existential. Let me compartmentalize that and let me just, for fun and giggles, you know, maybe if I, I didn't have uh, something else to do, I don't know, I would just look at far out ideas as this video is. I would look into solar geoengineering and nuclear power, even though that's still not even carbon friendly. I would, I would investigate these things, and I would report that. That's a good journalism. It, for that sake, it's good journalism. But for the, for the stance that this is, this is written in stone, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, okay. Our climate envoy said we're clueless. Carbon emissions keep rising. I see no progress. We had our windows of opportunity. The cops have been nothing but schmoozing... Um, celebrity parties, okay, Bono gets invited to the State of the Union, really? Not me or Greta or any of the other climate, you know, activists, you know, actually want to say the truth, not that I'm an activist, but someone to come out and really say, the, if we really, we would, we would elevate individuals like myself, not putting myself on a pedestal, but who are reporting the truth, and we would put them on front page news, me and many others who are telling the truth. That's what we would do. These are the tangible steps I see. We would we'd protect wildlife. We would sanctify it. But no, everything has been inwards towards anthropocentrism. That's a fancy word for saying human-driven everything. Everything's been human-driven. About us, for us, by us, Super Bowl, all of it. Yeah, in the Super Bowl. Don't even get me started on that. So I've sound snide. Again, I'm not. We just have different ways of managing 
the information and processing reality. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, the ham is cooked. It's cooked, all right? Uh, stick a fork in it. The best thing you could do now is take care of your integrity, um, live with love, excellence, um, even though knowing, knowing that all of your efforts will eventually just be, uh, as everyone is in history, uh, turned to dust, let's say. But it's been a fun ride, right? Okay, guys, just wanted to check in. You know how I feel. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya. In New Zealand, Cyclone Gabrielle has killed at least four people and left a trail of destruction as it moved away from the country while rescue and recovery efforts continue. Hundreds of people were rescued from rooftops due to rising waters. Prime Minister Chris Hipkins called Gabrielle the worst storm to hit New Zealand in the past century. New Zealand's climate change minister, James Shaw, delivered a scathing condemnation of governmental inaction on the climate crisis, which is contributing to more frequent and more devastating weather events. I don't think I've ever felt as sad or as angry about the lost decades that we spent bickering and arguing about whether climate change was real or not whether it was caused by humans or not, whether it was bad or not, whether we should do something about it uh, or not, because it is clearly uh, here now. Uh, and if we do not act, it will get worse.